Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, California Beekeeper. I'm Jose, up the mountain here. Gonna go do some feeding and some mite treatments. This is a route that I normally would take to get to my bee yard. And I just had to stop by really quick, check this out. So I wanna show you guys just the wrath of Dixie, man. It's just crazy, it's crazy, man. So hey, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Glad you could join us. Smash that subscribe button for us. Taking you along with us. Let's rock and roll. used to be a little diner spot it wasn't opened but it was a cool building logs the log entrance just destroyed a couple buildings it looks like they saved that building back there in the backside but i mean totally totally wiped out They have these uh, porta potties all along this this strip here for all the fire crews and personnel. So they held it here, put fire retardant on this side. It hasn't gone on this side, but it came up to this point. This was not too long ago either. It's wild. All right, so made it up. Fires over there, and well, you can't see the mountain, but it's on that side. Just pulling up, it is still pretty fresh. It's about 58 degrees right now, but some of them are flying, and it looks like they're bringing in a good, some good pollen. It's like a white pollen. There it goes before he stings me. It's like a white pollen little yellow pollen as well brought some boxes with some drawn comb last time i was working with a lot of uh, a lot of foundations so you want to see what things are looking like they're up there but, uh, yeah they're, just, they're not touching my foundation yet it's a good thing we brought some uh some drawn out comb that way we could get her up there, start laying. <laughs> Sneaking bees. I'm trying to do this without the veil. Here is a couple hives. I think it was a week and a half ago. We stacked these. This is all we had at that time was just foundation. Uh, this was the last of the foundation that we had that we got from Pierco. A box of uh, these black foundation double wax. I'm pretty familiar with these things. They work great, um, but you know, right now we are just trying to get these girls rolling. So we need her to lay and it's just a lot of work to draw out a whole box of foundation. So what I'm going to show you guys is what I'm going to do with this single. And it's a decent sized single, a double feeder. Here's two gallons and it's pretty plugged out. We don't want to get a honey bound downstairs. We're going to kind of checkerboard it and I'll show you what checkerboarding is you will put either foundation or your new frame. Well, we're gonna go probably two. So we're gonna take these two out, put them upstairs. Uh, maybe one of these exterior ones in order to just make it a good solid three right here in the heart, uh, in the center of the foundation as feed, three gallons. So we're gonna give it three gallons total with that pollen. Right now, these girls are bringing in a lot of uh, pollen 
out here we got a field of alfalfa right over here another field right over there alfalfa all over so we're hoping that maybe we'll get a few more hot days here and uh get these girls really stimulated and cranking and laying upstairs but in order to get her to lay based on my experience getting drawn comb upstairs she'll start laying cranking that feed and uh yeah so i'm gonna show you guys how to check board this one we might steal a little bit in order to take over there they're somewhat working this top box over here here's another one um all foundation and that's all we had at that time good strong singles over here same thing so that's what we're gonna do um is put drawn comb upstairs we brought a bunch of uh comb that we had that are drawn out you know not the best but uh it's what we have right now as far as inventory so we're making use of it i was trying to eliminate this stuff here that has that wire but this is good comb here uh, little girl with the pollen pants so this is good laying stuff here for her and that's what we want to do is we want to get upstairs and start laying here we had pulled i had some foundation originally the last time we were here i took some brood from these hives here and just stacked a bunch of foundation but uh, i don't want to slow these i don't want to slow these queens down so we're going to put comb that we have over here and uh like i said just keep putting it upstairs there here's some that we're going to put some more comb in there and uh do the same thing here these ones are working them up pretty good so it's all about right now feed get these girls uh rolling man i got stung pretty good in the back of the head so ooh. anyway <laughs> let's do it like i said this was some wired comb that we had here you can see they started to get some wax moths and the important thing here is to help the bees out any of this stuff get rid of it you know clean the exterior frames you know you don't have to get too detailed i like to make sure that uh these things are nice and tight i don't want any funny business going on here's a little brood drone brood pattern which is okay most of it's all good comb but uh help the bees out get all this nasty wax moth stuff out there's some ugly stuff that the some uh rat got into so that's a lot of work for the bees so whatever you have just kind of go through your comb help the queens out bees to handle their business so get the best comb that you have and put it in there where it belongs let's get to it all right we'll take this stuff here let's get this patty off really quick we weren't really working it that much. So. Oh man, those things are tight. If you're new to this channel and I always tell people that I like to uh, pull frames from the outside just to ensure that I don't squish the queen. Here's some foundation that we put in week and a half ago working it pretty good so like I said I want to put maybe three frames upstairs so let's do this really quick pull three frames we'll put it right in the center I think that's uh, some good business there and they're bringing in a lot of pollen she has nowhere to lay and Help her out. That's funny. Yeah, so much pollen. Okay. And now we could introduce some of these uh, right in here. Oh, that's a foundation. 
station. There you go. That's what pretty much what checkerboarding is. Kind of space out the bees a little bit. And one thing important to know is that if you're in the cold climates, uh, you don't want to do this uh, too late in the season because you do not want to break that uh, brood. That uh, not that brood, but you don't want to break up that cluster uh, by staggering your frames, checkerboarding them. So that's very important if you're in cooler climates and you're getting into that cool season especially those cool cool nights really fresh mornings I'd, i would not recommend doing this but here in california you can still do it it's warm i mean even in the in the evenings early mornings it's still you know 48 50 degrees so this is drawn comb, brood, drawn comb. I think this is just a little foundation here, but they're working it. It has some patches of uh, brood. This was a honey frame that was from the outside. We moved it in, had some bees, and this is comb. Let me just put in comb, comb, comb. All right, and then we put it upstairs right here. We are gonna take some of this foundation off. Maybe we'll leave these two foundation close to the feeder. Pull this out. This one here had some layout and some pollen. Some larvae right in there. The sun's behind me. And since it's on this side, flip it around. Put it in there, that way it could Stay good. One more frame of drawn comb. Stick it right in there. And that's pretty much what the whole checkerboarding thing is. I just wanted to show you guys. And this is your, I like to keep that top box tight. Now let's stack it and uh, close it up. Stack your hive. Has feed downstairs. Connect the feed upstairs. Maybe we'll put one more drawn comb right in there. Normally I like nine frames. So it'll be uh, eight frames, nine with the feeder. But because we have foundation, it frees up a little room. I don't like things, uh, that's a big gap. We'll put a drawn comb right in here too. We'll close it up. Here, I'll show you guys some of these Pierco frames that they seem to be working. These are two Pierco frames. This is an old one. This is, I don't know, about close to 10 years old here. The new stuff that we just got. Yeah. Starting to work it. Good deal. And this is one that we had pulled some brood from upstairs. And put it in. Some of these that are already stacked. Put two brood on the top upstairs just to really get those queens rolling. Crank the feed upstairs, downstairs, pollen patty. These will be good to start winterizing here soon. We're gonna hit this rabbit brush here for the for the August uh, pollen source, and it's gonna be awesome. All right, right here, here's a, an example of what I did last time because of the lack of uh, drawn comb to stack this here. Full box of comb. Mm -hmm. Wanting to work it, they just don't. Don't have it in them to crank it out. It's a good strong single. All the way across. Um, crank the feed. They're eating the pollen patty pretty good. So what we're going to do here is something a little different. We're going to introduce some uh, foundation. We're going to go foundation here, closer to the uh, the feeder. We're going to crank that feeder. Then we're going to put one right in here, right in the heart of the brood. And then pull one of these uh, honey frames. We'll put a drawn comb right in here. So let's go do that really quick and uh, see what the result is uh, here. In about two weeks, we'll come back. Two foundations. 
on a nice strong single shouldn't be a big deal as long as we're cranking the feed downstairs we're gonna put a uh, feeder upstairs as well Evacuation. Evacu evacuate now, Janesville. Uh, south note to Milford. Call 257-6121 for help. Okay, that's our area. Huh, let me take a quick look. They're asking for an evacu evacuate now. Right over there. That's where we have to go. Oh, shoot. All right, let's wrap this up, guys. <laughs> oh, man. We might have to take the long route home. Go into Reno and drop down. Shoot, I don't know. But uh, we should be all right. Let's continue, huh? All right, so we already gutted this out, all the foundation. We're going to leave foundation there, foundation here. But we are introducing the Pierco in here down below just because it's double waxed this stuff from Western Bee Supply is not but double wax it's just foundation we've been sitting on and have been trying to incorporate into our program slowly little, little by little but so tough you really have to crank the feed on this just single wax stuff the Pierco stuff oh man like that we are going to put two foundation so here and here foundation and then we're gonna put a uh, drawn comb right in here somewhere and try to be careful you don't want to roll that queen when I say roll sometimes there's a bird comb in between these frames like here this stuff here and if she's on that frame you could just roll her and really hurt her you know these uh, queens they're pretty tough but uh, you don't want to roll one especially a good one like this which you know she's laying she's laying good we're bringing in some pollen here. Look at that. So, stick that up here. And let's bring some of that Pierco stuff. Oh, stick this right in here. Got our laid out. Put it right upstairs. Bring the foundation. And the reason why I'm putting these foundation closest to that feeder is because. We're going to fill that feeder up to ensure that those foundation really, really get worked. I run a lot of uh, these uh, W clips. You can see that. So I like that gap there, especially when they roll in the semis. It's good airflow, good spacing. So. really fill it up foundation foundation comb they're gonna clean that out and uh, you really want to put those two frames right over those And that's uh, kind of how we incorporate some foundation and some drawn, some old comb into boxes when I'm supering them in order to get them working that top chamber. So it's, uh, it's kind of the way I do things. It's, it's worked for many years. Um, but hey, drop a comment down below. Uh, let me know how you do it, you know. There's different methods for different areas and uh, 
I'm a firm believer of, uh, you know, you could always grab a little bit here and there from different uh, outfits, different uh, techniques, methods, incorporating to yours to make something a little different, a little twist. Oh, before I forget, let's go over here and uh, We'll see if we can get out of here go back down to the valley with this evacuation uh, notice on our way home looks like uh, right on the other side is where it's burning really good this burn a few years back totally wiped out I mean they're still clearing all of this I saw this big sign and I wanted to stop by and show you guys share this the goat fire 21 years ago still hasn't come back you know but it's pretty cool 300,000 seedlings planted in May of 2002 it was a small fire over here thousand acres but still illegal abandoned campfire horrible all that's burned up there but there was a different fire that rolled through here too I think a couple miles up uh, that was a bigger fire I think it was last year or the year before anyhow we're taking a different route heading home and uh, we won't be passing through Chester and uh, even though we we could it's just I'm gonna go meet the kids Kelly over further north in Reading and uh, go play in the park so I hope uh, you guys got some tips on kind of how I do things when I'm stacking or if uh, I'm trying to get that queen to start laying in that top box. So let's rock and roll, get out of here. You can see a little bit of ash falling down past this thing. It's like a wood cabin, but they put foil or some kind of, uh, so it doesn't catch on fire. Cleared, up, cleared all this pine needles away from here. Uh, it's kind of similar to what they did over there in that old uh, Kiefer Ranch barn. Uh, fire personnel told those guys to put uh, those uh, galvanized uh, roofing material and they slid it up against there and that's just so it prevents when it's windy it doesn't go up and underneath and catch things on fire man it's hard to see but there's ash falling hopefully that wood shingles doesn't go but we made a break around this tree so it doesn't engulf this tree This is where that other fire, where it was getting evacuated, it was right over here. And this is the outline. And it get grew big. So far, this is now the biggest single fire in California history at over 750,000 acres. That's crazy, man. Uh, the biggest fire was, I think, the Mendocino Complex. And that was uh, multiple fires, multiple areas where it got started. But this is the biggest. The Dixie Fire is the biggest single blaze fire in California history.
creeping up to being the biggest of all time. We're up here somewhere. 44? Yeah, we're over here. Fire's here. Here's Lassen Peak. Lassen Peak and we're like over here. Yeah, here we go. This was updated August 21st. 714,000 acres. 